You're looking at my customers table and every time I get a new customer I have to enter their information here. When I'm getting tens or hundreds or thousands of new customers a day I'd rather have them fill it in than me. How does that work? Well they're not going to have access to my access program here but what I can do is I can use the collect email data feature in access. What that does is it allows me to collect data from other people by sending them a data entry form in an email message. So in that form I can go ahead and specify the fields in this table that I want them to fill in. Once they fill it in and they hit reply and it comes back I can have access automatically process those replies and take their data from that email message from that form and dump it right into here and boom all the work's been done for me. Really cool. Now keep in mind a couple of things. First of all is that I can't choose all the fields. See if this makes sense. I've got the customer ID field and it's got the data type applied to it auto number so it's automatically generating that field. So I don't need the customers to fill in that field, so that's not going to be included in the form. The other thing is that because it works in conjunction with Outlook, you got to make sure that you have the Outlook program installed on your computer. And also, the email recipients should have Outlook as well in order for it to work properly. So to get started here, just make sure you select the table that you want to go ahead and create this data entry form or to base it upon. Then come up here, click on the External Data tab, go to the Collect Data group, and then click on create email. It's going to list uh, the steps that needs to be accomplished in order to complete the operation here. You can go ahead and read those but I'm going to go ahead and click next. The first step is go ahead and select one of the following types of forms. Do you want an HTML or an InfoPath? If you've worked with InfoPath go ahead and choose that. I'm going to keep it simple and say an HTML form. Click next and then here's all the fields within the table excluding one which is the customer ID because remember that has the auto number data type field to it so it's automatically going to fill in for me when we start adding records here. So I can go ahead and choose all the other fields by selecting it hitting the uh, add selected field button or I'm going to choose all of them here and then over here I've got a couple of options. I can go ahead and reorder the fields here so the customer name in the data entry form is not the first field that they fill out. I can go ahead and move that down have it as the second field or go ahead and move it back up and then as you recall when it comes to creating or naming our fields here well I've got customer names slammed together when it comes to the naming convention yours may not be very conventional when it comes to well in this case my customers so if you have CN as the acronym for customer name you may want to select this and then come down here where it says label to display in front of the field in the email message and clarify it you know go ahead and type it out give it a space and then go to the next field come down here clarify it so the label makes sense to what they're going to be filling in. There's no save button so when I come back here you can see that after I type it add the space it automatically saved it. In any case let's go ahead and click next and then the replies it says is going to be stored in the following folder which is going to be the access data collection replies folder which is going to be a subfolder to the inbox folder. I'll show you that once we pull up Outlook here and then down below it says do you want to go ahead and have the uh, replies automatically processed yes go ahead and check that And you can also once you check it set the properties of the automatic processing when you click it and open it up you've got the default check boxes here you can go ahead and change the settings you also have the date and time to stop if you've got some other email campaign going on to collect data that says okay for this day only those who go ahead and give us their information will enter them in a drawing that might work go ahead and click on the date picker field choose a date and then it automatically adds the time a generic time you can go ahead and of course update that and say it's a you know type over p for am if it's in the pm and then you know change the time i'm going to click cancel click next and then it says how do you want to specify the email addresses of the recipients either through outlook or access if it's outlook you got a couple of choices you can either type in the uh, email address for each recipient or you can also use outlook's address book and if you don't know how to use that then again you want to watch my Outlook 2010 training videos or if you have a data field over here and I don't but if I did and it had a list of all the email addresses for each client which kind of defeats this training video because I, I want to be able to add only new clients in any case I'll go ahead and use the uh, Outlook program click next and then it says review the subject and introduction here so do you want this for the subject in your email add customers table form and then the introduction Go ahead and make changes if you don't like it. And then click next. And then it says, okay, hey, you're ready here. When you click create, you're going to see your email message with the uh, 
data entry form in that message or the body of the message. And then it says to see the email status, you can go ahead and go to the external data tab in Access 2010 and click manage the replies. Also when it comes to processing the replies and to import the data into your database here, you'll have to open up the Outlook 2007 or later, which is in this case Outlook 2010, so 2007 or 2010, from which if you checked automatic uh, processing, the data will be imported into the database when we start Outlook. Let's go ahead and click create and it's flashing down below. Go ahead and click on the corresponding button. Let's maximize it to see it all. Fill out the form please and then below that in the body fill out the form included in the message and send it back to me. And then it gives a warning. Type only in the areas designated for data entry. Your reply will be automatically processed so hey make sure you stick to the fields here. In any case let's go ahead and type in some email addresses here that we want uh, these customers to go ahead and fill in their information. I'll go ahead and send one to myself. That way when I send it to myself you can get an idea of what to expect when you get one of these and how to reply to it. I mean it's pretty simplistic. Go ahead and click send. Then let me go ahead and open up Outlook. Click on the start button. Go to Microsoft Outlook 2010. Click on it. It's sitting in the out box and then it sends it off. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to my inbox. Click on send and receive. I should be getting my own email message back. Okay there it is. Double click. Okay. Fill out the form please. Now of course when it comes to filling it out we have to hit the reply button to send it back to the email address essentialoils at dreamforce.us. So go ahead and hit reply and then as it says only type in the designated areas because that's the only thing that Access is going to see. So when I scroll down I mean I can type outside of it but it's not going to pick it up. For the customer name there's the label of it and remember the name of the field had it slammed together. No space in between customer and name so Again, uh, your naming convention, you can go ahead and uh, change the label here so it's something that the person filling out this form would understand what you're asking for. So go ahead and click in here and then type in the customer name. Then hit the tab key, goes to the next field. And notice down below it says type in any combination of numbers and letters up to 50 characters. Again, it's reading the uh, field properties for that field that we have back in our Access database because remember we set limits back in Access Level 1 to our field saying, okay, just two characters for the state. And there you can see it down below, any combination of numbers and letters up to two characters. In any case, let me fill this in real quick. Hit the tab key, zip code, and then, hey, why not allow them to type in some notes? And then when you're done, click Send to submit your information. Okay, let's go ahead and click Send. Close out. Go ahead and close out of Outlook. And then we're just sitting here waiting for the replies. But as you recall in the wizard there, the setup said you have to have Outlook open. So let's go ahead and open it back up. Click on the Start button. Go to the Outlook program. And then go ahead and come up here on the Home tab to the Send Receive. Click on that. Let's get those coming in here. Now when you look in your inbox, it's not going to be there. As you recall, that is going to dump it into a folder that's going to be a subfolder to the inbox. In other words, if you look over here in the navigation pane, you see the inbox, how it has a little drop down arrow, click on it. There it is, Access Data Collection Folder. Click in there, and we have the two replies. Now if I go back to my Access database, I don't see them in here. I could come up here on the Home tab and click Refresh, and there we go. Cool. Because I already had the table open, it just needed to be refreshed so it can pull in the data. Automatically processed, awesome. I don't have to type it in. I had all my clients do the work for me. When it comes to one client, typing in a record, uh, I'm sure that's probably not a big deal. It'll take them about a minute or two. But if I have to type in a lot, that's going to take me a lot of time. So Now, coming back up here on the external data tab to the Collect Data group to manage the replies, click on it. And here's the form that I just sent out. If I send out additional forms, I could go ahead and uh, I'll see those here as well. And you can see up above what I have selected, the fields that were included in the message, the customer name, address, city, and you can scroll down. We've got some message options. Remember, in the uh, wizard, we can go ahead and set the date and time to stop it, or uncheck or check all the other settings. Let me click Cancel. I can go ahead and resend this message in case if somebody's like, oh, I accidentally deleted it. And better yet, if we're finished with it, go ahead and select it and delete this email message. And then, of course, back in my um, Outlook program, I still have that folder there, and if I don't want to do this anymore, I can go ahead and right-click on it, delete the folder. You sure you want to do it? Yeah. It dumps it over into the uh, deleted items bin just as a backup, so that way if I really want to delete it, let me go ahead and expand it. There it is again. Right-click on it, 
one more time and delete it, and this will do a permanent deletion. Are you sure you want to do this? Say yes. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.